Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello, hello, this is mold reveal number 86 and we actually have a double dip this week. You know what that means, it means these two pieces go together to create a special little set, uh, but for me, this is not such a mystery this time and a few of you guessed it as well, but on the side there you can see in permanent marker from the previous owner what it is. And if you caught it in that shot, I hope you are as intrigued as I am, but I open it up and I look at this gorgeous texture as if they were plucked straight out of the veggie garden. A gorgeous set that is so damn lovely, all the little petals making up this wonderful cabbage cup and saucer set. Okay, so my initial reaction to these was, wow, that texture is so lovely, so amazing. I then thought, oh gosh, how cute to do a cabbage set. And then I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Who would have thought to make a cabbage tea set? Like, out of all the things you think of when you think of having a cup of tea, cabbage is probably the last thing I think of. Like, I'd probably go for a strawberry. Oh my gosh, I, I want to make a strawberry teacup of matching sauce and now like these ones. But the strawberry makes sense because of like strawberry shortcakes, uh, strawberry jam, like you have strawberries with your tea. Whereas <laughs> cabbages, I kind of think of like a stir fry or like a cabbage roll, which doesn't really often go with tea. Well, not in my world. Maybe there is a world where that works. Uh, if, if that works, I need to know about it. But... Maybe that was actually the exact point of creating these, was to be like, ha, ah, you know what would be hilarious? Let's make a cabbage teacup set to really get a little bit wild at this tea party. Like, <laughs> regardless of that, where they came about and whose wonderful idea this was, I think these are great. Of course, here is your look at the mold itself so that if you're looking for it, you can see what the numbers are and start to collect it or maybe keep your eye out for other pieces of this set. I'm not sure if there are more in my molds that are this set. I don't think so. I couldn't see any more. I, I'm running out of these Albertas. The Albertas are really cool, but I haven't really seen as many lately. But yeah. That's the mold for you. I also wanted to mention that I did look this piece up as well. I have started to do a bit of research on the pieces where I can and maybe try and find some kind of information about where they started and what sort of why cabbages or why fruit tumblers like last week. I'm not giving away exactly what that was in case you haven't seen it yet, but they're fantastic and so wonderful but i think where did that trend start is it just a trend for trend's sake or was there something that happened like a song that was written or like a pop culture reference like was it seen in a movie and then it was recreated i find it so fascinating especially with these molds given how old some of them are i, I just want to know more and i also feel that we should bring these back like we should bring the cabbage cups back, the fruit inspired pieces, because I feel like so much of our dinnerware selection, well, from what I've seen at mass produced shops, is so minimal. I even like a lot of pottery now that you can buy that's all handmade is so minimal. And I just, I want wacky collections coming to life again and bringing a rainbow back into our everyday. Like, I know the minimal stuff is great. I love it. I mean, I have it in my house, but I miss this just obnoxious color <laughs> like I want the obnoxious color back with a bit more prominence and to just revive that again so let's do that together with textures such as these on these teacups uh it was actually really hard to think of anything I could possibly add to make these my own style so that's why I'm kind of just chatting this week instead of telling you what I'm doing because I've already kind of done this um, technique before on a few other pieces and I was really fresh out of ideas I could not think of anything to sort of make it my own other than to just let the cabbages shine I can say that if you make it all the way to the kiln opening there was a glazed reaction that I think will shock you all and this week feels 
a bit like the same as my other videos and I have actually really missed having some pieces to truly explore with. The milk jug from two weeks ago, I should have just played with my own style in some of those because I feel like I've been really missing my imaginative play of my illustrative style and I, I'm itching to get back into it, but I promise they are coming back. So if you're getting bored of the technique in these videos, I promise I'm doing some cool things. I, they, they're coming. Uh, I've got a few pieces that are going to be covered in color and whimsy, but I still wanted to share this I think it's still such a valuable piece it's such a gorgeous artwork despite it being antiquing and glazing again I, I just didn't it just deserved a place on the channel okay I think it's really cool if you do have any ideas of what you could do with these glorious pieces please let me know in the comments decided to do the green and purple cabbages I think that it would be cool to do some random colors as well and I was also thinking about how in Australia we are having a lettuce shortage and one lettuce is costing $12 a head which has forced people to substitute lettuce in meals and fast food chains for cabbage so maybe these are a tribute piece to the lettuce shortage and I'm just owning that <laughs> a little bit I say cabbages are underrated and maybe they might make a trendy comeback because of these teacups and the shortage I pack all of these in the kiln and I tried to fit all five plates and five cups in the kiln but after a bit of Tetris I couldn't fit the last saucer in so I'll pop that in another firing later in the week and I'm actually impressed with how much I did fit in. I opened the kiln the next day and look at this wacky glaze reaction I just warned you about before. <laughs> you know how I said I had no idea how to make it mine? <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing I could do was think of adding a little face to the cabbage and making it come to life. <laughs> but I'll share more of that in a second. Let's take a look at all these pieces and just have an overall gander at them. So I think these are all so great. The colors are really fun and I love the look of them. I love that they distinctively look like cabbages now with the darker areas of the glazing, just giving that that shadow enhancedness that yeah just brings out that texture because I think sometimes when the clay is plain white it can be kind of hard to read what the subject matter is of the piece sometimes you're just like it's meant to be something but I'm not quite sure but then when you add the color it you can just see it straight away like that yep this is a big old cabbage cup a little old cabbage cup I guess <laughs> the purple cabbage is lovely as well but I feel it could be more rich in color so you've got that real like prominent that real nice ready purple I guess it is but I don't know how I would do that with the purple glaze options I have been able to find so far one thing I noticed when painting was one set of teacups had these tiny little cracks, one in the saucer and one in the teacup. I did them both purple so they would go together as a broken set, but on the teacup itself, it was really small. You couldn't even see it, but the purple plate opened right up. It was a huge crack. That's why I sometimes just card pieces at bisque if they have cracks, because this is massive now. It could be broken up and used for a nice mosaic. And I would say that the cracks been probably caused to expand a lot more because it was on the bottom shelf of the kiln and you're not meant to put plates on the bottom shelf but I did because I was trying to squish everything in. Here I have the sneaky little glaze reaction. I sculpted a little face on it to make it come to life. It was meant to be this weird and wacky thing and I really love it. I hope you love it too. I did actually have a glaze reaction on this piece in the end on the eyes. I used the low sheen glaze which bubbled and I'm going to say it was because of the antiquing leaving a bit of excess moisture on the eyes maybe. Uh, anyway it was an interesting reaction the next part is I noticed this set was a little wobbly and I noticed the saucer had a curved shape from warping during the demolding stage just something I'll have to look out for making sure both the teacup and the saucer are nice and flat so that they sit nicely on the table in future although it makes this cutie jiggle which adds it to its character which is so adorable all in all a very cute mold I think a cute set and I hope you like it regardless of the fact that the technique wasn't uh, very like like eye-opening it was the same sort of thing that we've done before but maybe this is the first video you're watching that I've done um, and in that case I hope this was cool let me know what you think of this piece in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for the next reveal and more content like this thank you for watching here is your sneak peek for the next week's reveal which I'm so excited to show you